So this is a continuation of uh, the beginning of a demonstration of the possibility that miracles really work. The, uh, I'm what's called a teacher of the Course in Miracles. And we came to a point in the last episode where we were suddenly faced with the admission of an assumed responsibility to perform the actual act of healing. And as a teacher of the Course, I, I must accept within my own association of this world with the particulars that have given me a self-identity to admit initially to the possibility first that the power of my mind has caused this association in space-time, which what? Demonstrates my body function and guarantees me that uh, somehow as a body, as an identity, as one with a birth certificate, I'm going to be here and occupy this spatial reference until my inevitable demise occurs. And uh, in the practice of this workbook of A Course in Miracles from our Savior, Jesus Christ, who says very simply, no, I came here to tell you that uh, uh, you are already back in heaven with me. We've accepted the religious philosophy in the fundamental sense where the responsibility for the solution to this problem of apparent sickness and death is ours. And it is impossible if I follow in the idea of a procedure of the relinquishment of the defenses of my apparent spatial correspondence, I will not begin to experience an expansion of my mind, which cannot be somewhere in all of space-time a full accord with your mind, since our initial encounter was to deny the entirety of our source of reality. <laughs> Somewhere within this uh, apparent continuum of time, we're going to have to look at each other in our separate identities, and this is the process of the teaching, and say very simply to each other, no, I want this resolution of my apparent inability to uh, know who I am or what I'm doing or how I got here. It began with the fundamental admission that there must be an alternative outside of what I thought our relationships with each other were, because obviously our conflictual ideas about our associations with ourselves have resulted in the retention of a body within an arrangement of light form that guaranteed uh, my annihilation. Now the two preceding lessons, and this lesson is going to be 137, and it's going to say that when I am healed, I am not healed alone. The two preceding lessons, 136, said very simply that my sickness is in a literal sense an active denial of the wholeness that is inevitable in my relationship with God's mind and 135 that said, if I do defend myself within my uh, apparent characterization of separation in relationship with you as a separate entity, all right, I will be in an attack and defense mode that will literally deny me access to the certainty of causation within the temporal arrangement, which is actually my mind. So this is the progression that I hope we have made uh, in a correspondence with what I'm going to attempt to do right now. If you've been following me on this video, if you've uh, practiced the idea that you can train your mind to another association of reality that better defines a bet in a limited fashion what you really would like to be in your correspondence with the universe, it has become more and more available to you until it's time for us to look at the certain reality that as you change your mind, the world around you is also changing. And if you'll accept it in its most fundamental sense, without the necessity to justify it within your own conceptual mind, this lesson, the one that we're going to do, the lesson that says, uh, when I am healed, I am not healed alone, uh, 
is going to take, out, take on a very exciting prospect to you within your own mind and in the previous configurations that justified your need not to forgive each other for the apparent chaos of this world. We're going to take just a moment, if we can, and it lasts for four minutes and 15 seconds because I timed it. But I want to show you just a little bit of the end of Lesson 136. It says very simply, uh, sickness is a defense against the truth because you'll see that you have actively been opposing the idea of the inevitability of your perfection. Let's watch it together. Now listen, God knows not of your plans to change his will. The universe remains unheeding of the laws by which you thought to govern it. And heaven has not bowed to hell, nor life to death. You can but choose to think you die, or suffer sickness, or distort the truth in any way. What is created is apart from all of this. Defenses are plans to defeat what cannot be attacked. What is unalterable cannot change, and what is wholly sinless cannot sin. Such is the simple truth. It does not make appeal to might nor triumph. It does not command obedience, nor seek to prove how pitiful and futile your attempts to plan defenses that would alter it. Truth merely wants to give you happiness, for such its purpose is. Perhaps it sighs a little when you throw away its gifts, and yet it knows with perfect certainty that what God wills for you must be received. It is this fact that demonstrates that time is an illusion, for time lets you think what God has given you is not the truth right now as it must be. The thoughts of God are quite apart from time. For time is but another meaningless defense you make against the truth. Yet what he wills is here, and you remain as he created you. Truth has a power far beyond defenses, for no illusions can remain where truth has been allowed to enter. And it comes to any mind that would lay down its arms and cease to play with folly. It is found at any time. Today, if you will choose to practice giving welcome to the truth. Sickness is a defense against the truth. I will accept the truth of what I am and let my mind be wholly healed today. Listen, healing will flash across your open mind as peace and truth arise to take the place of war and vain imaginings. There will be no dark corner sickness can conceal and keep defended from the light of truth. There'll be no dim figures from your dreams, nor their obscure and meaningless pursuits with double purposes insanely sought remaining in your mind. It will be healed of all the sickly wishes that it tried to authorize the body to obey. Now is the body healed because the source of sickness has been opened to relief, and you will recognize that you practiced well by feeling that your body is now becoming whole. If you've been successful, there'll be a sense of joy and happiness that will begin to overcome you. Perhaps you do not realize that this removes the limits you have placed upon the body by the purposes that you gave it. As these are laid aside, the strength the body has will always be enough to serve all truly useful purposes. The body's health is fully guaranteed because it is not limited by time, by weather or fatigue, by food and drink, or any laws you made it served before. You need do nothing now to make it well, for sickness has become impossible. Yet this protection needs to be preserved by careful watching. If you let your mind harbor attack thoughts, yield to judgment, or make plans against uncertainties to come, you have again misplaced yourself and made a bodily identity which will attack the body, for the mind is sick. Give instant remedy should this occur by not allowing your defenselessness to hurt you longer. Do not be confused about what must be healed, but tell yourself only this. 
I have forgotten what I really am, for I mistook my body for myself. Sickness is a defense against the truth, but I am not a body, and my mind cannot attack, so I cannot be sick.